Hello everyone, my name is J.R. Harris, and today we're going to be talking about understanding your own work process while I talk about my work process. It's taken me a long time to figure out exactly how everything can work for me when I'm working on a lot of different projects. It's been a handful of years of trial and error, learning and research to to finally figure out what really works for me. Everyone is different, but the best advice that I think is out there is to learn as much as you can, but also take what re really resonates with you and what you know will work for you and apply that to your process and to your your entire experience. I used to work with mainly traditional art, but then I, I kind of sometime in high school, I, I started picking up the, the digital side, working in Photoshop, using an art tablet. And um, my first art pieces of art on Photoshop were not the best. <laughs> they weren't terrible, but you know, at the time I thought they were the coolest thing ever. But looking back compared to you know the things I, do, I work on now, they clearly needed work. And that goes for anything. Looking back at your drawings you did 5, 10, 15 years ago, even drawings you did a year ago, you can spot the flaws. And that's because you're ever growing. You're always learning and you're always expanding. And the more you work on your art, the better you'll get and start ironing out ironing out those problems. And Photoshop is, is one of those things. It, it's especially if you're used to just working traditionally, working digitally is, is almost like, it's not like starting over, but it's learning with a new tool. When I first started inking, for instance, I, I only used light boxes and I would, uh, and if you're unfamiliar with how a light box works is that you have a drawing, you put a, a new piece of paper over top of that drawing and you shine light underneath it and you're able to trace it. The idea there is you can sketch and work out Iron Knight I can't even say that phrase, iron out details, and then trace it over with clean, presentable lines. I did that for a couple of years working on my comic Wasteland Horizon, and something, looking back, like as I was working on it, something I noticed was my quality was really awesome, you know, at the time, in my... At my, in my opinion, the quality of my pencil work was cool. It was right where I wanted it to be. It was really matching what I envisioned. But the moment I got to the inking, it was lacking. And some of it has to do with not being familiar enough with inking and needing to work on that more. But some of it also came down to the light box. In my Star Wars Empire Strikes Back drawing, you'll see that I printed it out, and I talked lightly about it, I printed out the drawing and inked over it. That is, I realized that it worked a lot better for me because when I was using the light box, I couldn't get all the details in that I needed to, and I felt like I was improvising almost every time. Almost like, almost like I was blurring my eyes a little bit whenever I was drawing and just kind of going at it on a whim. And some of the quality, I think, was really diminished because of that, because I was consistently just improvising and not truly using all of the all of the details that I had laid down in my pencils. So deciding to switch away from the light box and, and going for more of printing something out and drawing on it was a was a big change for me. And it's it took a couple of years to really grasp that. Um, the past year or so, year and a half or so, I've I've really been doing that every time I draw something. Uh, not using the light box. It's been a good year and a half since I probably used a light box, and that made a huge difference. The quality difference immediately I saw improve because I could bring in the details that I needed instead of improvising most of the time. And I also talked improvising a little bit on my other video because improvising is a part of how I work. I, I leave room for that improvising, though. And that's how my work process is. That doesn't work for everybody. Some people need to see every detail and then go in with inking or you know go to the painting, go to the next phase. For me, 
I like to improvise and I like to almost put myself to the test. Sometimes I succeed and sometimes I fail. But that to me is part of the process. It's part of the fun. It's far, it's it's challenging. Figuring out what really works for you, I think is is the most important. And for the Photoshop coloring side of things, I, I've mentioned the YouTube video, the YouTube channel, Color with Kurt, so much because I, I just feel like I owe so much to him. Because what you're seeing now, what like as I'm coloring these Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic characters, as I'm coloring them, I'm using techniques that I learned from his channel. <laughs> also, I learned how to more properly use Photoshop. Going back to what I was talking about, about learning the tools. And when you're learning inking, especially if you are um, if you learn the inking process and, and how inking works, you'll, you'll start to realize it doesn't work like penciling at all, like I thought. I thought I could just go in and just throw down some ink and uh, call it good. But you start to realize just how much technique goes into inking and line weight. And there's just so many things. And... I started to realize how to use inking tools, pulling the brush a certain way and applying pressure a certain way. These are all elements of learning how to use it to your advantage and learning how to use it in a, in a quality manner. Understanding Photoshop is kind of in that same level of understanding. This lasso tool that I use to kind of highlight areas and fill them, I didn't have a very strong understanding. I just kind of knew, all right, I know how to use the brush. I know how to use the fill. That's about good, right? Like, And that kept me going for a long time, but I, I soon realized that there was a lot I didn't know and a lot that I needed to understand. Once I started watching Color with Kurt's videos, it kind of, it, it kind of impacted me on more of just a coloring phase, but it, it started to open my eyes a bit to the importance of understanding how to use a tool properly. And the only way you're really going to learn is doing and attempting and absorbing as much knowledge as you can from a lot of different people. The first instinct is is you hear one person tell you, all right, you do this, you do that, it's great. And that's what you do. And then you start tackling it. It's a good starting point, but you always want to try to find more than one person for especially for techniques because sometimes you learn something new that you'll you never realized before and that kind of comes hand in hand with digital drawing and digital coloring in general but i think the important thing is is knowing and learning how to use it properly because this lasso tool approach honestly cut down realistically hours of work on drawings because I no longer had to sit there and, and meticulously color in almost like I was coloring with colored pencil and coloring in every inch of the drawing. I was allowing the computer to do some of the leg of the work. I tell the computer where to color it and then it fills it. And so there is meticulous drawing involved. It, you're basically meticulous highlighting telling the computer where to go and then the fill happens so this reduces the sketchy quality of of using a pen tool on photoshop but it also allows you to manipulate things later on with lighting and whatnot i talked a little bit in my other videos about explaining my color process so i think that's kind of what i wanted to do in this video a little bit a process as you're working, process in art, in creating anything, is something that's so passive. It's not something that's so obvious. And I think that's why it's so difficult for a lot of people, is that, especially when you're young, you just kind of think like, all right, I need to learn how to draw, and I'm good. <laughs> but you start to realize just how much it goes into learning how to approach how to draw. It's it's kind of a dream within a dream situation, which is it's exhausting to to have to think about for a long time and and dissect. But that's where the whole idea, going back to the very first thing I talked about, was was learning all these different things and and seeing what ten different artists do, and then picking and choosing ten different things from them, or you know ten different things among that ten those ten people. Not everybody's going to want to use a light box. Some people will. What works for you?
Do you like using a light box? Do you not use a light box for your process at all and it works great? Then that's fine. And and being okay with that, not trying to fit in to a norm is really important. <laughs> I think also trying not to fit into a norm because it's a quote unquote style, I think is something that needs to be addressed. Going back to when I was working on Wasteland Horizon, I was using the Micron Micron uh, ink liners, and essentially they were not like brush pens. They were just ink pens that would just make one line, and you pretty much get one line weight out of it. And I remember I had some feedback from a local artist tell me like, you should probably try spicing up your line art a little bit using different types of inking tools as well as your other line art. And I, I didn't want anything. I was like, no, I'm going to keep doing it. It's a style. But then I realized very quickly that, okay, it's a style, but it's also not as good. And and maybe, you know, good in, and <laughs> it's hard to say what's good and what's not. Obviously, it's, it's all an objective situation, but it was clearly more pleasing to look at and I could show a number of people the difference I could show them one with the the thin line art with not a lot of weight variation and then here's where I tried other stuff and immediately more often than not people would be like oh I like this better this section of my coloring is one that is really started to become a, a, a style of mine and essentially what I do is I, I I make an overlay. I take like one large color and I cut it out. And what cutting out does, it, it's faded out, but what cutting it out does is making it making those hard lights really appear. And and it's a long very dis, very specific process, but essentially the reason why I'm able to effectively do this kind of lighting style is because of understanding fundamentals. I talked lightly in my quick thoughts video on art education and the fundamentals here really come to play is that the only reason why I can do the lighting the way I like to do it is because I understand that his gauntlet is curved and so therefore when light hits a curved object what will happen when that light hits that object and so doing studies doing still life of of a bowl sitting there and the way light hits it studying that over and over again in different lighting different styles allows me to be able to do something like this and, and it kind of goes along the lines of when you see cartoons and it's such a simple style it's so simply drawn if the artist doing that cartoon didn't have a good understanding of anatomy just in general the way things move, the way things lean, that cartoon wouldn't be as effective as it is. Because if you can do something in general, <laughs> especially in art, if you can do something on a larger, more detailed scale, doing it in a more simplistic way will be nice, quick, and easy because you understand it. Obviously, that's a very big generalization. It doesn't always apply in every situation. But to me and to pretty much every cartoonist that you could probably talk to, is that the movements of arms and legs and, the, like I said, weight distribution and the way things affect objects, knowing how all that works is all fundamental. It's all learning the fundamentals and then taking that into a fun, creative atmosphere. Now, is learning the fundamentals fun? It is not always fun <laughs> it can be and i feel like if anything ever has an answer of well i don't think it's always the best thing but i think hands down it's really good to recognize that learning is just a part of growing and it's also it's a part of getting to somewhere you want to be i find myself nowadays doing drawings that are more specifically hard lights sources the lightning, the lightsabers. And sometimes I can get so lost in that that it'll affect my ability to do other things. So that's why it's always good to not always do one thing. <laughs> because when it comes time to do other things, other styles, other approaches to lighting, it 
when it comes time to do that, I, I get lost sometimes or I have to hesitate and go, wait, you know, so that that's why I'm always, I'll be always a big supporter of making sure you're not always doing one thing all the time, rotating, trying different mediums, doing different things like that can really help stay fluid and stay ready to be able to attack other projects. However, this, this style lighting style of lighting is just my favorite <laughs> and so it's a lot of fun to do so it's hard not to do that i'll talk about it more in a largely dedicated video to our education but i i put so much focus on learning on that note of of doing different mediums and whatnot it's i put so much focus on looking and learning from other sources and this has actually kind of happened to me more of recently is is i was kind of hitting that like you know that art funk that you, that pretty much every artist will hit one point or another in their life whether it's frequently or not i was hitting that kind of that feeling of sl like uh, i just don't feel up to it or i feel like i'm just doing the same thing all the time and i think what really was affecting that was i was watching the same movies listening to the same music and i wasn't and i was working on the same projects all the time and even if I was switching between projects, they were always the same ones. And whenever there was a chance to do something different, like, oh, you know, we need to, I want to do this video editing project or something that was just so like out of left field, I immediately just grabbed onto it and wanted to just absorb right into it. And, and that is a sheer sign of, of being overworked or, or burning out in kind of one area. The artist, Jake Parker, um, I feel like he coined the term, and if he didn't, regardless, he's the one that I heard it from. It, it was the whole idea of a creative bank account. And usually this happens in the most simplest way is when you sit down to draw and you can't think of anything to draw. In, in this concept idea is that if your creative bank account is empty, there's nothing that you can draw from. So how do you fill your creative bank account? Watching videos watching movies listening to music listening and absorbing creative material that is not your own <laughs> essentially and things that inspire you and the more you listen to that kind of stuff the more you watch and, and absorb the more you can feed off of when you sit down to draw something and so what happened to me recently was i i picked up different tv shows or i, I was listening to different music i was trying to do different things, dedicating one day a week to work a little bit on something else and, and just something completely different. And those types of things really allowed me to find the joy and, and, and excitement in these projects again. And the quality of my work reflects that. Doing this much lighting in a drawing like this with, with these characters, there, there's a lot of lighting and balancing and zooming out and does this look right and I have to add a little of this and a little bit of that. And that takes a lot of focus and a lot of problem solving. And if I'm not, if I feel like I'm burning out all the time, there's no way I can effectively problem solve. So at the end of the day, if you if you don't make time for filling that creative bank account, you're going to burn out a lot quicker. And recognizing that part of your process, part of your learning, part of your creativity, part of that is taking a breath, taking a moment to appreciate something. I, I became so obsessed with the idea of just go, just do it all the time, just do stuff all the time. And, and, then, and then I wonder why I'm burning out. It, Watching new TV shows really helped me, uh, like I said, listening to music, and, and changing up my schedule. All those things really helped, and they're a part of my art process. As, as abstract as it is, it's, it's a part of being able to continue doing art on such a, a demanding level, on a continuous level, something I got to do every single day, and, and it's a part of the process of learning. And you're always going to be learning, whether you're one year into learning how to draw or you're 20 years into, into drawing. You're always going to be learning new things about yourself and, and always going to be exploring that process. 
Well, thank you for sticking around for the end of this video. We talked a lot. I talked a lot today about, about my process and my feelings on on the whole process of art. And uh, it touches on a lot of things. You, you know, we'll talk about fundamentals. We'll talk about your day-to-day. -day. You know, what's your day off? It, it's, it just goes to show you that your art process, um, especially for me and a lot of, I'm sure a lot of people, uh, your art process goes just beyond how do I draw with a pencil? <laughs> So if you liked this video, please like and subscribe to see more videos. I, I plan on releasing videos every Thursday. So thanks so much for watching this. And if you want to see more art from me, uh, head on over to jrcomicart.com where I post all of my art, my Instagram, jrcomicarts, and my Twitter also at jrcomicarts. Thank you so much.